open the door. Good door. Can I get? Great, thank you. My channel's one year old. <laughs> What's up guys, Adriana here and welcome back to my channel. If you're new, make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you know when I post next. So today, if you're watching my video the day I upload it, tomorrow is actually my one year YouTube upload anniversary. I started this channel exactly one year ago, tomorrow, June 10th, and I just wanted to celebrate with you guys, hence the donut. So I'm gonna eat this. Mm. Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. I had to put extra sprinkles on it because when I got it, it looked so sad and now they're just falling off. So today I thought I'd talk to you guys about what I wish I would have known when I started my YouTube channel one year ago. Number one, I wish I had a better understanding of how YouTube actually worked. I wasn't actually really a YouTube watcher in the more recent years. When it first started, when I was like a younger teenager, I used to watch YouTube all the time. And then I just kind of forgot about it until I started watching Casey Neistat, like my junior year of college. And I got back into watching YouTube then, but not like a ton. So when I decided to start my YouTube channel, I originally started it as a travel vlog, more of just a way to document my travels that I did last summer. And it honestly wasn't until about a month ago that my sub count really increased because I didn't really know that much about YouTube. I didn't really know how to use end cards. I didn't know good ways to promote my content. I didn't know about like tags and titling my videos in a way that would attract viewers or would be common search topics. I was just doing it to document my travels and it didn't totally matter. Once it turned into quarantine and I was home with nothing to do and no job, that's kind of when I started really pushing my YouTube channel and where I tried to upload more than once a week and ventured into more lifestyle topics on my YouTube channel since traveling wasn't an option anymore. Number two, do your research. So I knew I wanted to start this travel vlog YouTube channel and I didn't really know how to put the clips together throughout my days to make it entertaining for people other than my family and close friends who were interested in what I was doing. So that's where I wish I would have watched some more travel YouTube videos or other vloggers to kind of get an idea of what works best and what catches the audience's eye better. Number three, give the audience some useful content. Now, when I first started, I was showing what I was doing, but there was not really a great value to the content I was showing other than check out where I am today. And I think if I had thought about this a little more in the beginning, I could have shown more how I budgeted, how I decided where I was gonna go, how I traveled, kind of giving the audience a little more information about how I was doing all this traveling instead of just showing this is what I'm doing. Number four, try as best as possible to be natural, comfortable, and confident in front of the camera. Now, it definitely takes some time. I know for myself, I've grown a lot in this matter. I know in the beginning, I didn't really talk as much or it was kind of uncomfortable. I go back now and watch some of the videos that I started with and it's kind of cringy to watch because you can just see that I'm not comfortable talking to myself, especially in public. Walking around by yourself talking to a camera in a foreign country definitely is going to get some eyes on you. So it was just one of those things you have to get used to, but definitely try your best at the beginning, whatever your channel content is, to be confident and comfortable and personable to the audience. Number five, at least I think this is five, make sure you are catching the audience in the first like 10 seconds of your video. People have a pretty short attention span, and if in the first few seconds your content isn't that interesting, they're going to click on to the next video. So you want to catch them right away and make them stay to see more. That's something that I wish I had started doing earlier on, and I think sometimes I did, sometimes I would forget. So really just being more consistent in doing this. Number six, make good thumbnails. This is something that I did not start doing until 
probably about quarantine when I was watching more YouTube videos and seeing how people had great thumbnails that were eye-catching and made me want to watch their videos. I would usually just take a screenshot from my footage, which sometimes I do still do now, but I try to make it look a little better. I add some text, I spruce it up a little bit so that as you're looking through videos, you see my thumbnail, maybe it'll make you a little more intrigued to click on it and watch my videos. Number seven, join some Facebook groups, some YouTube Facebook groups. I didn't do this until a few months ago as well, once I started watching more videos on YouTube and seeing what other people were doing. By joining these groups, you have other people who are trying to do the same thing as you and you can run ideas by them, show them your thumbnail options, and get feedback on your thumbnails, on your videos, and kind of spitball ideas to each other and help each other out and grow as a community. This is something that I definitely wish I had done earlier because I think it would have helped me grow my channel faster, having feedback from other people instead of just going based off of my non-existent experience. Number eight. Don't be afraid to promote yourself on your other social media platforms. Now, this is something that I did since the beginning, but I feel like as I've gone, I have made those posts a little more intriguing as well to get people from Instagram, from Facebook, from TikTok to come and look at my channel and look at the videos that I'm creating. Number nine. Make sure you are posting consistently. I started posting once a week, every Monday, and I tried to post around the same time of day. This is gonna help your audience know what to expect and when to expect you, which in turn will help your channel grow because your audience will know you're always gonna be posting at this time on this day. And that's gonna make them wanna come back because they know there's gonna be content there for them to watch. And if they like the content you're producing and putting out, they'll be more inclined to keep coming back week after week. And if you can post more than one time a week, that's better, but definitely consider quality over quantity. You don't wanna be posting every day if it's crappy quality or if what you're making isn't interesting. This being said, as long as the content you're producing is interesting to you and makes you happy, I say keep pursuing it. And lastly, number 10. My advice to you, if you're considering starting a YouTube channel, start it. You will hear everyone say this because if you never try, you'll never know. I actually was going to start a YouTube channel back when I was in college, my junior year. I got a MacBook, I was like, great, I have iMovie, I can make videos, this would be awesome. I was a dance and kinesiology major at UMass and I thought it could have been interesting content for people to see what life was like as a dance and kin double major at a state university and to see what that college experience was. Every single time I think about it, I kick myself for not starting. Now, it's definitely a much more saturated market now to start on YouTube because with quarantine, a lot of people have a lot of time on their hands, so they're starting YouTube channels. But I would hope that doesn't scare you off or deter you from doing it because even if this channel never grows to be something that can be a full-time job for me or that I'm making an income off of, I at least can say that I tried. I put that effort in to make something that I am proud of even though it wasn't the most successful endeavor of my life. So those are the 10 things that I wish I knew when starting my YouTube channel one year ago. I hope for all my longtime subscribers, you've enjoyed my content, you've enjoyed seeing my editing style and my vlogging and video making style develop as I've gotten better at editing and more comfortable talking to the camera. I appreciate you all so much and thank you for being here with me for one year and getting me to 331 subscribers. I hope I continue to grow. Hopefully I'll be able to travel again soon and this channel can get back to what I originally intended it to be. And for all of you subscribers and anyone else watching, I hope you stick around for another year of videos and exploring and improving as a person and as a YouTuber. Make sure you haven't already to like and subscribe and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye. Man, I love donuts.